What's up, guys? It's your girl, Matt Cox, with M.A. Couture Crafting. Happy holidays. Merry Christmas. The world has gone potholder crazy. Plum Easy has had these folded um, fabric, like folded, folded triangle potholders around forever. Shabby Fabrics has been putting out kits like nonstop. I have wanted to do one forever, and right now they have a larger one. If you remember in one of my quilt videos, I walked by a, um, a booth that had like a huge one and I was like, absolutely. If you follow Blue Mountain Daisy, and if you don't, you absolutely should be. She is one of my favorite artists, um, quilt textile artists ever. And she does what she calls a whiz bang and they're amazing. But this is all kind of in the same wheelhouse. And so we are making these pot holders right here. Look at this guy. It is so, it feels so nice and well made. It feels kind of, um, you know, I me, mean, I'm the couture crafter. I like things that are luxe. I like things that are luxurious. I try to make stuff that's kind of on the luxurious side, I guess. I don't know. It's nice though. You guys, it feels good. It is beautiful. And the options are just endless. So Shabby Fabrics recently debuted Plum Easy stencils, so you don't have to buy their templates any longer. I actually liked their template. I get it. I see how you could use a stencil to, um, to make it happen. But one of the things that she did was in the center, she fussy cut one and then just started further out. But she used a stencil to do that. And I thought, well, can you do that without the stencil with just the template? Turns out you can. Not a big deal. I fussy cut and then I just didn't do the first couple of layers and I started on the um I started on a layer that's further out so that we could see that little shrimp. Oh my goodness, the shrimp. People talk about the shrimp nonstop. It is cute. And I fell in love with it after I started working with it. Then I was all about the shrimp. I used the ombre fabrics out here, only one um only one colorway and it gave me that gradient with all the different colors. And you can use the template for either making a, I think you can make an octagon. You really can make whatever you want. But I think it's an octagon, the circle, and the square all from the same template. I love it. I prefer to have the templates. It just makes it a little bit easier. You can certainly figure out the math and draw it. but And the templates are inexpensive. I want to say I got them from my local quilt shop for, I think I paid $5 for three of them makes me very happy. So if you want to see how these come together, starch is your friend. If you would like, I suggest you get the Prairie Pointer. Um, I use that on my Dresdens before. They work really, really well for getting super duper crisp. Look at that. That is so crisp. You can't see any of the holes or anything. Like it just, I mean, it just goes together. It really goes together quite nicely. And it's not difficult to do, guys. You cut up a few squares, you fold them into some triangles, and you lay them down, and then stitch them down. Again, if you'd like to see how this all comes together, please keep watching, and I will see you guys on the next one. Okay. Oh, and the cool thing about these, I'm giving them away. What? What? Finally doing a giveaway. All right, guys. I will catch you guys on the next one. Okay. Bye-bye. little different. I wanted to do a folded star hot pad. Um, I've seen them a million times and I wanted to make one. Recently I saw one that had a focal image that kind of reminds me of that ornament that I've just done where instead of the folding starting from the center you choose a focal image and then kind of do it around. I saw this done with the stencil that Plum Easy, which is the, the brand that they make, but I wasn't going to be able to get it here in time for the holidays or in time for this giveaway, so I wanted to see if I could do that with this. With their pattern comes one template. They sell extra templates. Yes, you could photocopy this on paper, but then you, you're working on top of this, you're sewing on this. You don't want to be doing that with paper. You need to remove it. And so I think it's just easier to work from the templates that are already done. And this should make an 8-inch square. Um, they have a larger one, yada, yada, yada. But 
it's not just regular paper it's that interfacing paper they also sell interfacing paper for you to print on you know and and do your thing but all that to say this what I'm doing is not in the pattern in the pattern you've got the size squares that you need to make the folded star hot pad however it does come with this template it shows you how to fold the squares which is really simple I'm gonna go through that in a second but I'm just gonna start further out so I've got this little guy here this is the shrimp from the flamingos that everybody talks about and I was checking to see how far in I wanted to go if you remove this guy it's got layer one layer two layer three layer four and then they have this center square I made this square I fussy cut it and it came out to be four and a half by four and a half I folded it in half then I folded it in a half again and I gave it a press so I could find the center and then I just centered this guy up so I'm matching right and left and the top then I'm gonna glue baste it down and then I'm gonna give it a press so that I can get rid of these lines and because this is actual interfacing and not paper I'm not worried about burning it or anything like that then I'm gonna take these squares that have been folded and I'm gonna place them around not starting on layer one but actually starting on layer two right here and we'll do that together let's fold a square square is not difficult you just fold it in half and then you fold either side into the center I did that with these and when it comes time to come to the point I mean I can get a pretty sharp point but if you use a prairie point my goodness this is so much sharper like it's it's insane how much sharper this is than this it stays closed better I'm going to use the prairie pointer I didn't think it was gonna make that big of a difference this is a prairie pointer it's made by Susan K Cleveland I've used these for my Dresden work so I have taken the square folded it in half and it's got a five inch mark right here that goes across so I'm just gonna pull it down till it meets the top right there the top is at the tip and then it's got this center thing and you just pull this down until it meets the center I haven't sprayed this with anything then I'm gonna grab my iron and I am just gonna press it now this is metal so it will get hot and it will burn you but I'm giving it a nice press I'm holding it there for a bit and then I'm gonna do the same thing to the other side and you can just see that it comes to a nice a nice point I mean a really 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 nice point and I'm just gonna hold it there for a bit and then I'm gonna carefully pull this out and then I'm gonna lay my iron on this guy one more time just to close it up and you will get a really 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 nice point you can certainly do this without this tool I'm just a gadgets girl and that just happens to be one of the gadgets that really does work and then it stays closed now I know people who can do this with starch and get a super fine beautiful beautiful crisp and if you really want to do something grab a clapper and just plop it down on there that's not the right size clapper let's grab a different one I made my own clappers I thought I was going to sell them at one point we shall see what the world has in store and if you leave it on there it will certainly stay down and bam we have a beautiful prairie point which looks very different than the ones that I did just by you know not having the actual prairie point I don't think that's it 
Oh, there we are. Super crisp. And then I'll be back and show you how we're going to lay these out once I baste this down and then finish doing all of my squares. I'll be right back. I forgot to show you guys what I'm going to base this with. Elmer's glue. Just a little Elmer's. That I have in this bottle that's by Sharon Meester. Um, it's a microfine glue tip. And I'm just going to put a little glue here. And it's just a touch, just enough to hold this guy down so that I can work. I'm centering it left, right, up, down. There we go. And I'm just going to smooth that out. And once I put this iron on there, it's really going to crisp it up and it will be stuck down. And we'll be getting rid of those lines in the center. A little better. And now it's stuck on there. Like I said, I'm just using some um, Elmer's glue and I'm just putting glue at the top and the right. I left the left side for the very first one alone and then all the rest of them. You can go on ahead and put glue on the top and the corners. You can really put quite a bit of glue on here um, in a thin layer because you do want these to be stuck down and not moving. And so for the last one, you lift up the very first one. So that's why we didn't put glue on that side. And then after you lift it up, you can put a little glue under the, just underneath the very first one and put it down and then put the iron on top and let it dry that glue. This is a corner shape here and it gets, it gets uh, folded just a little different. Did you see that? It was at the diagonal. Then you bring the two corners up and that's how you do those corner pieces. And so you'll fold four of those triangles in that way. Same thing before for this, um, this next layer, the top and the right. Leave the left alone because you're going to tuck that one once you get back around to it. So you just work your way around, even with these squares here. Now, you don't have to do it this way. Um, I thought about it, and really, you can do it however you would like, as long as you can get these um, triangles and squares basted down well. You do what you want. You make it how you want. You do what you want to do. Um, I think that's how we get new things is when we go outside the box and try things. I'm just so happy that this fussy cutting work. I don't know why I thought that it wouldn't, but that's not what this pattern was originally for. And I'm always watching Shabby Fabrics. I try a lot of their things to see if I can make it work. I know, <laughs> I know she can make it work, but can I make it work too? And this was just a blast. I want to make a million of these little things here. They feel so like heavy in your hands and well made. So I suggest you guys give it a try. And again, these patterns are by Plum Easy. And when you get the pattern, you can do the square or the circle with the template that comes in the in the pattern. Even though there's one pattern for square, there's one for circle, you can totally do either with either pattern because it comes with that little template but i suggest that you buy a couple more templates because you're going to want to do this i think i'm going to even buy some more i bought some but i think i'm going to buy even more now i just lift up those triangles and for this one i didn't want to sew through the fussy cut area so i just tacked down a few of the triangles through the center on the four on four sides and then when I got to the triangle, of course, I went through all of them. But yeah, I just sewed right up to the center and did a stay stitch there. And that tacked them down so that I could do this, which is trimming it all up on the back to, a, I think I did an eight inch. These make eight inch pot holders. So they are, they are a specific size for these. You can make them smaller, but 
to make them bigger, you'd have to figure something out because the template only works for a maximum of eight. But you can make it smaller if you wanted to, if you just want to do like a wall hanging or if you're using this for a quilt block. So I marked where I wanted to quilt and now I'm quilting this. I'm just going around the black star where the lines intersect. I did an one eighth of an inch away from the edges. So where they intersect is where I stop and then I pivot and come back up the other side. And I'm using an open toe foot so that I can see my line that I marked. You can do this if you have a, a, um, a foot that will just allow you to work it or you can do this by eye. I prefer to mark all my stuff. I like my stuff to be kind of precise in the sense of the quilting. So like I said, I marked mine with the ruler one eighth of an inch away. And I put the batting on and I put the backing on, which was much larger than the square. I trimmed that square down first. Then I put the backing on and the backing is about 10 inches. And the same thing with the backing, because remember when you quilt stuff, it will move. And so after I trim this all up, I just bind it the same way that I would a quilt. There's no need to do bias binding on this because it's a square. And I bound it the exact same way that I would do a quilt. That is a two and a quarter inch strip, not a two and a half. And now I'm working on the round one. So let's work on one of these little squares. They make you do a two inch um, square to put down in the center and underneath so that you just in case you don't get it lined up perfectly. And then you make the squares the same way you did before is you cut the square and then you fold down the corners and hit it with the iron. I'm using my prairie pointer here just because I want the most crisp angle that I can get. And then I put a clapper on top. That's one of my clappers that I've made that I was debating selling at one point. I am ironing the template just because it had that little crease in there and I wanted it to, to lay flat for me. So I ironed it and then I put the little square right there in the center. So just in case you don't get your stuff perfectly right, you uh, can't see it. So I glued down the first four squares. They're glued down now. And then I'm gonna start placing this on the outer ring layers. And they tell you layer one, layer two, layer three, layer four. So right now we're working on layer two. And you just put the center where that line is and you kind of sit it where the circle intersects the, um, the line. It's like it sits on a little shelf. And remember the very first one you put down, you don't do all of the corners. You do the top and the right hand side, the top and the right hand side for the very first one. And then the rest of them, you can put them all down because it doesn't matter. Can you guys see how flat these are laying? I am so tickled with how crisp these are. I don't think I used any, maybe I did use a little starch, um, but maybe I didn't because using that clapper and um, holding it down with that prairie pointer, it's magical. I think these came out so good. And again, once you do one, you really will want to do a bunch of them. And like I was saying, I, I saw Shabby Fabrics do this a couple of times. I've seen other people do it too without the template. But they sell kits. So you can hop on over there and they've already got the fabrics picked out for you. I know some people do not like to pick out their own fabrics. This, of course, is the Tulip Pink Daydreamer collection and I'm enjoying it. If you are concerned about those triangles moving, you could sew them down right now. You could start sewing them down layer by layer. I just wait till the end to sew them down because I know that my machine can handle it. But if you're concerned about them moving or lifting up those little triangle pieces as you're sewing and that freaks you out, I get it. So you could just sew it down layer by layer. However you'd like, you could go through the center or you could just go around the edges. I've seen it done several ways. This is why we don't glue down that very first triangle. I had to lift it up and tuck it. Now for the circle, you don't have to use, <clears throat> excuse me, you don't have to use those corner pieces. You can just use all triangles 
and you just keep going around. You do not use the corner pieces, which is kind of cool. This one went, well, I wouldn't say it went faster per se, but it's just different. And is this eight sides? I think, yeah, I think you can make an octagon. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yeah, you can make an octagon with this or you can cut it down to a hexagon. You do whatever you want to do. But I think I can see how this could easily become an octagon because it's got the eight sides there. So I just keep gluing and making my way around. The longest part is folding the squares, especially if you're trying to get them super precise and you're using your prairie pointer. That did take up the majority of the time. And then I marked the quilt. So just to quilt it. And I just did, I think I did two, one or two rounds around the, um, the perimeter, around that black line. Did I do black too? No, I, maybe I just did one in the orange. And this is a great place for you to use your decorative stitches and get, get funky. Do your thing. Do not feel limited by what the pattern suggests. So after you do this layer, you are going to put that iron on it and just make sure that everything is nice and stuck down. Here we go again for that last layer. You have to tuck it and then add a little glue so that it stays because you really want this one to stay because you're going to do some stitching with it um, flipped over. So after you do this, put the iron on and just seal it all up. Hold it down. Make sure everything is laying flat. Hold it, hold it. I'm using this cordless iron by Panasonic. I like it. It gets the job done. It's kind of like having a craft iron. So I'm using another clapper and I just left it on there until I felt like it was flat and that it had cooled off. And then I lift up those triangles on the outside and just sew through the middle. Now I did not sew through the middle of all of them. I sewed through the middle of four, like, well, technically two. I went diagonal and diagonal and I left the others alone because I knew I was gonna catch them when I did my quilting. So I'm just lifting up all the loose tabs right now and putting them down because again, we're gonna flip this over and we don't want anything lifting or falling off. We want to know that it's it's good and in there. And because there's so much up downs and all that kind of stuff and tucks, I really felt like it was secure. I don't think you can just pull one out. I know you can't pull it out because it's it's sewn in a few different places like right here. When you do this sewing, it's not going to move. It is in there. So I flipped it over and I sewed around the circle on that line. And then after I finished sewing on that line, I went ahead and cut right next to the line. I didn't cut the line, but I cut right on the outside of that line until it was a nice circle. Now, what was weird was the way that they wanted you to bind this. Now you can certainly just grab some bias binding and do your thing. But the way that they had me do it, I don't know why, but it just felt so nice and tight and well done around the circumference of this pot holder. You can certainly just do your two and a half inch strip, fold it in half, sew it around, you know, use your best method. But there's something about the way it felt. It just, it's really nice. So I'm grabbing the batting and the backing, which are a little larger. And I put those together and then did the quilting, just like you would do a quilt. I used that insole right batting since I had it. And now we're just doing the hanger. And I think you cut a four inch rectangle, like four by two, and fold it in half. And then fold each of those halves to the center. And press again. And you get that little tabby thing there. And I'm just putting the edges together and making sure that it's flat. 
and I'm trying to figure out which side is the prettiest side and we will make sure that that's the up. I didn't do a door hanger for the other guy and I'm just testing it and I put a couple of basting stitches in there. So I did some really big stitches so that it stayed and I didn't have to worry about it coming out until after I did my binding. So because this is a circle, you're gonna have to do bias binding. There's no way to get around it. So the way that I do it is I cut a square, usually 18 inches, and I fold it in diagonals and then I fold it in another diagonal. And now the two folds are on the left and closest to my belly button. I chop off the left and then I just take a strip. It might be two and a half inches, but here they were very specific. I wanna say it's like one and a quarter inches or something along those lines, I don't know, but they were very specific. You need to buy the pattern anyway. And so I cut two strips off. And when you're attaching strips this way, you need to offset by one quarter of an inch and sew it together. Now here I am using my hot ruler. It's a ruler that you can get hot. It's not actually hot. And I'm trying to turn this over wrong sides together and quarter of an inch and then iron it. If I were doing this again, I wouldn't just iron it. I would run some glue on there and baste it down so that it stays down really well. I'm cutting an angle here because we're gonna do the tuck method. There are a couple different ways to bind your quilts. I like the tuck method. The tuck method works just fine and it worked just fine for this. So you just roll it over so that you have a finished edge and then roll over the top so that you still have your quarter inch right there at that corner. Cut off that little dog ear and start stitching all the way around. And then when you get to the place where you stitched, you just lay it on top of one another. And it's just that simple. And now I am rolling it over and making sure that I have that quarter inch tucked in. And that's why I wish I had glued it so I didn't have to do that. And that's it guys, that is pretty much the pot holder. I used glue, um, I use permanent glue because that's who I am, but you can certainly stitch in the ditch and get your backing down nice and tight, but that permanent glue works really, really well. And if you are just gonna be putting hot stuff on there, you're just gonna be burning the fabric to the other fabric anyway. So I would not worry about stitching and all of that. That's just an extra step. I ran a substantial amount of glue underneath that lip. And if you leave it for 24 hours, you can totally wash it and you will not have any problems. So now I'm just cleaning up all the little stray, you know, the little stray uh, pieces of thread that we get. Ooh, the back of that's pretty too. I wish that I had looked at which side was up for the back because then they could have flipped it around both ways from the hanger. Wouldn't that have been nice? Something to think about. And there we have it. A very, very nice two trivet slash pot holders. Thank you guys so much for watching this with me and hanging out with me. If you haven't done so already, check out the double oven mitt. That's probably the greatest gift ever. And this will all be a giveaway. So I will see you guys on the next one. Bye-bye.